A computer chip, also called a microchip or semiconductor, is a piece of silicone embedded with an integrated circuit that stores memory or forms the brains of electronic devices. Chips have become essential parts of our modern life. They run our mobile phones, computers, cars, rockets, military, and even a toothbrush nowadays. But now there is a shortage of these. Car companies have had to halt, if not slow, production of new cars. Sales of used cars are up, since there are no new cars in the market. It has become almost impossible to buy a new PS5 due to this shortage. Smartphone makers warn that the shortage could affect the availability of their new models. But this is not the first time a chip shortage has happened. The world has seen severe chip shortages since 1988. This video will talk about the causes and impacts of those shortages in our history, including the 2020 to 2021 shortage. 1988 The 1988 chip shortage was due to the high demand. It was the greatest chip shortage before the 2020 shortage. Here is how it happened. The 80s is the period when affordable home computers were introduced to the masses for the first time. Dynamic random access memory, or DRAM chips, were highly needed for computer memory. Japan, which controlled 90% of the DRAM market, was selling its chips below the market rates in the US. Numerous RAM manufacturers in the US had to close their businesses because they couldn't compete with Japan. Of the 11 American firms that were making DRAM, only two remained in the market, Texas Instruments and Micron. In 1987, the US government, under President Reagan, had to intervene by imposing economic sanctions on Japan, which were later lifted after the Japanese agreed to sell their chips at market rate. But, the sanctions had a negative impact on the chip industry, contrary to what the US expected. The sanctions made Japanese chip makers export fewer chips to the US. Due to the high cost of production and risks, the American chip makers did not re-enter the market as expected. As a result, in 1988 there was a scarcity of DRAMs. This led to a surge in chip prices. For example, the cost of a 256 kilobit DRAM chip surged from $2.95 to $12.45. To cope with demand, manufacturers had to divert their resources to produce more DRAMs. But this, in turn, created a shortage of other types of chips, such as static random access memory, or SRAM, and video RAMs used to control computer screens. It was reported that workers at seven semiconductor plants owned by Hitachi in Japan had to work through their one-week summer vacations to meet demand. It took until mid-1989 for the problem to work itself out, and the cost per megabyte of DRAM has been falling ever since. 1994 In 1994 and 1995, there was another personal computer boom, which led to another chip shortage. In this period, a lot of cool computer technologies were invented. It was in this period the World Wide Web was born, aka the internet as we know it today. Microsoft released Windows 95, which was the biggest release of Windows ever. Amazon, the world's biggest e-commerce website, was also officially launched during this time. Many people were buying personal computers. This led to higher demand for computer chips. To make this shortage even worse, there was also a shift to new advanced chip manufacturing processes. The newer process required more cleaner, clean rooms. A clean room is a factory where chips are made. Due to this requirement, many initial batches of chips were discarded due to manufacturing errors, leading to low yields. 2000 The 2000 shortage was a result of poor forecasting by Intel, the largest PC processor manufacturer by that time, followed by AMD. Intel underinvested in 1998 and 1999, which caused a deficit in processor chips in 2000, affecting desktop personal computers and servers used to build corporate computer networks and websites. In the middle of 1998, Intel halted construction of its new plant in Texas because of the flop in semiconductor business. Around the same time, its new 820 chipset for faster Pentium 3s and a new memory technology weren't working together as planned, so they had to go back to the drawing boards to see how they could solve the problem. The series of these events caused a delay in the manufacturing of new processors, leading to a serious Intel processor shortage in 2000. Luckily, AMD, by then a struggling company, saved the world from this shortage. While Intel was busy fixing its problems, AMD was seeing tremendous consumer acceptance with its new Athlon processor, which was faster than Intel's Pentium 3. Many major PC makers switched to AMD due to Intel's shortage. 2004 in 2004, there was a lack of CDMA chips for mobile phones due to aggressive rollouts of CDMA networks around the world. CDMA is a shorthand for Code Division Multiple Access. It is a technology that enables multiple users to connect to the same cell tower with the same radio channel. 
A CDMA chip facilitates the phone to do that. CDMA was a more powerful and flexible technology compared to GSM technology, which was used at the time. Qualcomm, a US-based company, owns most of the key patents for CDMA. It controls nearly 85% of the total market. At the time of the rollouts of CDMA networks, Qualcomm found itself unable to cope with the demand of the CDMA chips, because many phone manufacturers were also making more phones with CDMA technology. Since it controlled the large market for the technology, the world entered into another chip shortage, this time affecting mobile phones, which were becoming part of our everyday life. To accommodate the upsurge in demand and ensure future product supply, Qualcomm made improvements in its supply chain and invested in long-term capacity agreements with its supply chain partners to significantly increase and secure production capacity on their behalf. In addition, they added more engineering teams in its bases around the world. 2011 On March 11, 2011, Japan, one of the world's largest producers of chips, was hit by a powerful 9.0 magnitude earthquake and tsunami which caused massive loss of life, nuclear meltdown crisis, damage in transportation systems, and electrical blackouts. As Japan was dealing with the aftermath of the earthquake, the world was going into another severe chip shortage. The supply of memory and display chips was highly affected. A couple of days after the disaster, spot prices of memory chips began to rise. The price of flash memory chips jumped to more than 20%, while that of DRAMs rose to 7%. The earthquake knocked out a factory owned by Shin Etsu, the world's biggest producer of advanced silicone wafers, a key material needed for the manufacturing of semiconductors. This was a major concern for the chip makers, including Intel Corp and Toshiba Corp, that buy wafers from Shin Etsu. The auto industry was also severely hit. Renaissance Electronics, a major producer of chips used in vehicles, saw its main plant knocked offline for three months after the tsunami, sparking a supply shortage that rippled through the industry. Toyota, being Renaissance's biggest customer, was highly affected. 2020 to 2021. The current chip shortage, which started in 2020, is due to unexpected demand in consumer electronics. It is the largest chip shortage in history. During the COVID-19 pandemic, people were forced to stay at home. Working and learning from home became the norm. This resulted in a booming demand for consumer electronics, such as mobile phones, computers, video game consoles, TVs, and so on. The growing demand for these devices drove up the demand for chips that were needed for processing, memory, display, power, connectivity, and other functionalities. This led to an imbalance in the chip supply chain, and to make the situation worse, chip shipments were delayed due to reduced air travel and the prioritization of global shipments of pandemic-related supplies. In total, global air cargo capacity declined a staggering 20% in 2020. Also, in September 2020, as part of the China-United States trade war, the U.S. imposed restrictions on China's largest chip manufacturer, SMIC, which made it harder for them to sell to companies with American ties. These restrictions forced companies to switch to other manufacturing plants, like Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, TSMC, and Samsung, which were already producing at maximum capacity. Unfortunately, a series of disasters also happened which tangled the semiconductor supply chain. The state of Texas, home to many semiconductor companies in America, experienced an unprecedented cold snap in February 2021 that caused enormous strain on the power grid and shut down factories. Several weeks later, a fire caused by electricity overload burned Japan's Renaissance chip plant, destroying 23 machines and filling the sensitive clean room with smoke and soot. As if this wasn't enough, Taiwan experienced its worst drought in more than half a century, leading to water shortages among chip manufacturers, including TSMC, that use large amounts of ultra-pure water to clean their factories and wafers. According to Goldman Sachs, at least 169 industries have been impacted by this global chip shortage, with the automotive and consumer electronics industries being the most affected ones. Toyota, the world's biggest car maker, announced to slash worldwide vehicle production by 40% in September 2021. Ford had to park thousands of their unfinished vehicles while waiting for chips. Tesla, the leading electric vehicle manufacturer in the world, had to rewrite its vehicle software to support alternative chips. As people were turning to home entertainment, the demand for video game consoles, which are now in shortage too, highly increased and put extra strain on the supply chain. It is estimated that the shortage for the new Xbox and PlayStation 5 consoles is expected to continue through 2022. The mobile smartphone industry has started to take a hit too. According to Canalys, global smartphone shipments shrank by 6% in the third quarter of 2021. To overcome this chip shortage, chip makers, with the help of their governments, have invested billions of dollars to boost local production and diversify the supply chain around the globe. 
In the US, the Biden administration plans to allocate $52 billion in incentives for the domestic semiconductor industry. TSMC, the world's biggest chip maker, plans to spend about $100 billion US dollars over the next three years to increase its production capacity. Part of the investment will be used to build new semiconductor factories in the US and Japan. Samsung said it plans to build a $17 billion semiconductor factory in Texas in 2022. Intel is setting aside an investment of $95 billion US dollars over the next decade to build new chip-making facilities in Europe. The company also plans to expand its fab capacity and is spending $20 billion US dollars to build two new factories in Arizona. With all these efforts, it is clear that the shortage is going to end. But how soon? That remains unclear. So until then, just hold on to your favorite device and take good care of it. Because experts say the shortage will get worse before it gets better. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like and share it with others.